Hey and welcome here to my new video. I'm Pascal and this video is about the problem with the ISO 500 and some noisy footage with the Phantom 4 Pro. So maybe you ask yourself now, why is this guy using a Phantom 4 Pro now and not the Mavic Pro anymore? I still have the Mavic Pro, but I crashed it and so the gimbal is broken. It was a difficult situation, like it was around 50 meters from the drone away, not too far. But it was hard to see where the drone exactly is and there were some power lines. I thought I was already over the power line, so away from it. And then I was flying down the drone. And yeah, I crashed into the power line, so now the gimbal is broken and I'm on Bali at the moment. It's quite difficult here um, to get it fixed and I want, I, I need a drone here, so I, I don't want to wait a couple of weeks until I get it back. So yeah, I decided to buy a new drone then and repair it when I'm back in Germany. And then I saw for the US price the Phantom 4 Pro in the shop here and I directly bought it because in Europe it costs a lot more than the US price. I think it's around 250 or 300 euro more than you would pay in the US. So yeah, I directly bought it and I'm pretty impressed with the camera. I love it. This camera is just incredible. And um, around a week ago I went to the Mount Batur here. It's a very nice volcano here in Bali. And I tried to use the log profile there and the problem was that most of the footage I got was grainy. It was a lot of noise in the footage and I didn't like that and it was just with a log profile and I think it's because DJI fixed the ISO of the log profile to 500. At first I thought, what? Why, did, why do they do that? Because everyone knows ISO 500 can cause a lot of noise with smaller size sensors and yeah, so I was googling around a lot and I found this document from DJI and this document it tells about why they did it and it sounds logically even if I didn't understand everything completely. But the basic essence I would say so from what I understood of the document is that the algorithms of the cameras today are actually better than the sensors itself or more developed um, and so it actually makes sense in this um, profile to use ISO 500 because the algorithms can figure out the details again and the dynamic range you will get in the log profile with ISO 500 should be better than with other ISO. So that's why they do it. But yeah, this document helped me a bit to figure out a bit more about the ISO 500 problem there, but I still had my noisy, noisy footage. And so yesterday I went to the beach, the Echo Beach in Bali. It's very nice, they're good for surfers. And I tried to figure out how I can get rid of the noise because still a lot of um, footage that's online from the Phantom 4 Pro that is shot in lock doesn't have any noise. So I, I knew that I must do something wrong there. And I must honestly say here that I don't have much experience until now with uh, lock footage. This is simply because I shoot with a G85 from Panasonic and there is no lock profile. And I had the Mavic Pro before. Um, it has a lock profile, but yeah, with the first firmware, it was just a pain in the ass to to use lock on the Mavic Pro. So I stopped using it and, uh, it and just use Cinelike. And so yeah, this is basically my first camera where I really get into lock footage. And yeah, so I went to the beach yesterday to test it out and I figured out that you can do a lot of overexposing with lock footage. And that's the solution basically, because like everyone knows, the more exposure you have, the less noise you have. But usually you get the problem that you lose a lot of detail in the highlights. And of course, we don't want to lose this detail. And this is what the lock profile does there. It preserves the details in the highlights, even when you're hardly overexposed the image. Like, so yesterday I tried a lot of overexposing steps. I started with um, plus 0 0.7 then up um, plus one and I ended up to plus two, which is a lot of overexposing but it worked well. I compared the Cinelike footage, you can see that here now, and the Cinelike footage had the, has a problem when I overexposed it that the sun went bigger and bigger. It was a sunset 
and the sun were just a very small circle in, in the sky, actually. But when I used the Cinelec profile and I overexposed it, the sun went bigger and bigger, like the zebra that I saw on my screen. And when I switched to lock, it was different. Then suddenly the zebra didn't went that big anymore. So the sun stayed as small as it was. So like you can see here in the footage, um, we got a lot of details still in the highlights and some details in the shadows. I, I want, didn't want it to overexpose it too much because I still figured it out. But as you can see, there are, I would say there are enough details in the shadows. It looks pretty nice. And also there's not so much grain in the shadows. So only when you zoom in a lot, then you can see some noise. But um, like when you watch it like normal, you don't see any noise, which is perfect. And yeah, so I think that's the solution. Like just overexpose it a lot. And one little tip here more, turn on your zebra when you use lock. I mean, you should turn on your zebra all the time, in my opinion. It just doesn't make sense to don't use it. Um, and when you are overexposing the shot, just um, give the camera of the Phantom 4 Pro a couple of seconds because what I figured out was when I started recording and um, I had overexposure of two, first the zebra was a bit bigger and when I was flying a bit it turned smaller. I don't, I don't know why but um, suddenly the sun was perfect and the zebra showed the sun perfectly. So yeah, just wait a bit after overexposing and um, maybe the zebra will, when, will go a bit smaller then. So maybe that's an algorithm of the camera that figures out the details in the highlights. I'm not sure exactly how it works, it's just what I think of it. But yeah, that's the solution for the problem. And, um, and I would say you can get very nice footage with a lock profile without any noise and with a lot of details in the shadows and in the highlights. And, yeah, I love this profile, absolutely. I will use it a lot more in the future. And I just wanted to leave this quick tip here because I was researching so much on YouTube and on Google and stuff, and I didn't find a perfect um, video or article about the solution for it, which is basically just overexpose it. And don't be scared of overexposing because the log profile handles it pretty well. Yeah, that's the conclusion here of this video. I hope you liked it and I hope you get a lot better footage in the future and yeah, see you in the next video.